Hey everyone, this is Marbozir and this is part 3 of Let's Play Endless Space on Impossible. So, when I last left off, I was at war with one of my neighbors, the Hisho Empire, but I just call them Orange because I can. I'm currently trying to invade one of their systems. I need 11 more turns to actually take over. I also have a slight problem with my morale, but I'm about to build a lot of infinite supermarkets, which is the first improvement you can research that increases morale on the system. Once I get all those, I should be able to lower my tax rate and get my empire into fervent again, up here. But until then, I need to stay at 35%. I don't want to lose 15 gold per turn when I only have 58. I am also researching some military technologies and actually I'm going to grab this beam and I'm going to grab the next beam right after that. I want to improve my designs a bit. Actually, the design my current fleet is using is slightly outdated. But let's continue. I'm about to get into a fight, but I don't think this will be a big one. But I'm going to do this on manual, just to show you something I quite often do with my fleets. Come on. There we go. Yeah, I'm way stronger than he is, but I'm going to do this on manual. Because one of my ships in this fleet is down to yellow health, as far as I remember. So what I quite often do in fights like this, when I'm pretty much guaranteed to win, is use engineering card, which improves the repair three times in a row. So that I can get out of this fight with more health than I entered it with. And while I fight here, there's one more thing I didn't actually mention yet, which is experience on individual ships. Because you get experience not only on your actual hero, but you also get experience on every single individual ship. As you can see, this guy right here, this destroyer, is at level 3, with 21.5 experience. And all the remaining ones are at level 1, this is indicated by this small red thingy in the top left corner. So even though these are all the same exact design, this one has slightly better stats. This is simply due to his level. These are both exact same design, yet this one is a bit stronger thanks to his experience. And I got a level up from that fight, very nice. So what am I going to grab? That's an interesting question. I'm not too sure about that just yet. I could just get another level of Commander-in-Chief or Ground Pounder. I think I'm actually going to get another level of Commander-in-Chief which gives me extra experience on my fleet. That's pretty good. I could get Ground Pounder to get my invasions done slightly faster, but I'm going to grab another level of Commander-in-Chief. And he's actually invading my system now, so I can't left this one. I could just split one of the ships into a separate fleet. This one is not very strong, but I should have enough time to build a ship on my home system and on this system as well. And before I start doing that, I need to update my destroyer design because it's way outdated right now. Even though I am actually about to get another military technology in one turn. But once that happens, I can just update it again. And I'm actually going to create a new design once I have the beam weapons with this hull. But I'm not going to bother with this just yet, since I might have to just redo it one turn later. Right, so I think I need to just get rid of most of this. I can definitely update most of the defenses and most of the weapons here. So I'll just get rid of this and do it again, because, you know, that will be way faster. I'm kind of tempted to get the engine. The engine does take a lot of space, but having extra speed can be really useful. And I could actually get this one for plus 2 speed. 1 extra speed is not worth 10 extra tonnage out of 140. But I am going to get one engine module actually. I think it's worth it for the extra mobility. Alright, extra health. Some defensive modules. Which gives me 38 capacity for weapons. Let's get rid of one of these. 45. Yeah, that's not too bad, I suppose. So let's grab these missiles. 
And some ultra dense slugs. Hmm, three each. I think this is okay. Although, yeah, 30 capacity for the engine is a bit much. I'll just get rid of that. As much as I like the extra speed, I'll reserve the bigger hull for the engines. Alright, this should be good now. Let's apply it. And I can't actually retrofit my main fleet, not only because I wouldn't have enough gold anyway, but that this can only be performed on the systems you actually own. And obviously I don't own this system. I'm trying to own it. <laughs> Alright. So as you can see now, this ship is called Destroyer 2, since I updated the design, so this is version 2.0. So let's make a few of these. I should have enough ships by the time he can take over this system. He needs 14 turns, as you can see right here. So, I do have more than enough time for that. Let's make two of each here. Yep, there we go. Seven turns. So let's have a look here. Can I lower my tax rate yet? Hmm, not really. I'll be losing a lot of money if I do that. And I don't like losing money. What can I do here? Oh yeah, this system needs infinite supermarkets as well. I would normally grab these morale improvements a bit earlier. So this could be considered a small mistake in this game. I should have grabbed this at least 5-10 turns earlier than I did. Yeah, I know this already. He started invading my system. Right, so on the next turn I'm going to get a new beam weapon technology. And I think I'll design a new ship once I get that. Yeah, he's trying to invade multiple systems again. He's been doing that for a while. That's just a bit annoying, really. What does he want? Oh, the green ones open borders. Yeah, sure. I need to send some ship to explore green systems. I would grab this one, but I don't have open borders with blue, so I can't go through here. I can send these to explore. I actually have one scout in here. So... And I can retrofit this destroyer. And I can also fight over here. Alright, I'm going to do this fight manually. Uh, but I'll pick my cards before I go into manual combat, because as long as you sit on this screen, you have unlimited time to pick your cards. Once you go into manual combat, you have limited time before the long range phase actually starts. It doesn't seem to really matter all that much. He only uses kinetic weapons. I think I'll just use Sabotage. This is one of the safer cards to play, I think. Because if he wants to counter it, he has to use Engineering, and Engineering doesn't increase any of his damage. And if he plays an offensive card, the Sabotage kind of counters it indirectly. It's not a direct counter for offense, for example, but it reduces accuracy of his weapons, which is quite nice. It makes me take less damage, and I prefer to reduce my own losses before I actually think about my own firepower. So this should be good, let's go into manual. Nine ships in this fight. My fleet would be much stronger right now if I could retrofit them. But I need to get over my own system first, and I need to have enough gold. I can guarantee I won't have enough gold to upgrade this fleet right now. So, let's see how it goes. I should be able to win this easily, unless he counters me three times in a row or something like that. And even if it does, I still might be able to win. Yeah, he's using sabotage as well. Am I actually using missiles? Yeah, I, I am, but not that many. So, I'm not sure why he insists on playing this. I guess it makes sense in long range phase, though, when I'm actually using missiles. But as you can see, I still got an advantage. I'm about to destroy one of his ships. Oh, he used engineering now and countered my sabotage. But that doesn't mean he will do any more damage. It just makes him heal a bit more. And removes my penalty to his weapon accuracy. I'm still winning, even though he countered me. 
which probably wouldn't happen if I got countered with an offensive card, for example, since then he would do more damage. I might not be able to destroy all of these, but I destroyed three for now. Let's see if I can get the last one, yeah. So I win, even though he countered me once. I did take quite a bit of damage. So it would be nice getting a really easy fight right now, where I could use engineering three times in a row. And I got another level on my hero, awesome. So what should I grab? Hmm, I'm not too sure about this. I don't want to grab these combat abilities, I don't use them all that often, especially when I'm low on gold. And they cost me more gold because of a ne negative trade, trade of my race. So, I think I'm just going to pick more offense or more defense that will unlock something extra. Yeah, that unlocks plus sight. I don't really want plus sight. I can get another level of veteran. I don't have all of these abilities memorized. Right. I'll just grab extra offense right now. Or I'll grab... Actually, no. Scratch that. I'm going to get extra ground pounder since I want to speed up these invasions a bit. And with 11 melee, I got plus 110% invasion military power. That's really good. So, let's get that. How are my markets doing? Can I lower my tax yet? I can a bit. But I still need a few more. Okay, let's continue. Oh yeah, I need to pick my research now, right. So, I think I got enough military technologies for now. I could get some of these still. If I'm going to use beam with missiles, I could grab extra missiles. Okay, let's grab extra missiles. And after I get that, I'll go to some of the other trees. I actually want to increase my fleet capacity a little bit, which means I need this. This gives me plus two fleet capacity per extra new class unlocked. And I have at least two new ship classes unlocked. I have this one unlocked and this one. And I'm pretty close to the next one. So that will give me four extra fleet capacity, I'll just head towards that. There we go, it's queued up. Yeah, I need to hurry up with getting rid of these invasions. But my ships are about to be done very soon. And I might be able to get rid of this dude. He has 325. And I can retrofit this fleet, or can I? I might not have enough gold for that. Yeah, 98, and I don't even have that. So I have 301 against his 325. That might be an interesting fight. I can try, because why not? <coughs> I might have a decent chance to win. Oh yeah, I could get some extra defense on this system. I'm not sure if that actually delays an invasion in progress. It might. I think it does, but I'm not 100% sure about that. I could withdraw this fleet from Korana, but I don't want to break my invasion. Oh, and this is a perfect fight to heal myself up. Now I can use engineering three times in a row, and I might even be able to get out with full health out of this fight. So attacking me with one ship right now is actually counterproductive for the AI, because all he's doing is healing me up when he attacks me with one ship. Not to mention he's giving me some extra experience. So this is also something to keep in mind when you're attacking the AI yourself. Attacking with much weaker fleet not only does nothing, it actually helps your opponent in situations like this. I don't think the AI is smart enough to do something like this. I don't actually seen it done. 
but there's no point giving your enemy free experience, obviously. And yeah, only one of my ships is not at full health now. So that was a completely wasted move from the AI. Okay, let's have a look at my taxes again. Yeah, a bit better now, but I still can't lower it too much. I can send my dude to some other system and it probably makes sense now. Does this system already have? No, it doesn't. I could send him here because he's going to take 11 turns, 9 turns to actually get supermarket there. So, right, I'll do it like this. Oh, I can't actually do it from this level, I have to go to hero screen. And assign him, and then assign him to new system. And one thing to keep in mind is, once you reassign your hero, you have to wait, I think, 5 turns to actually reassign him again. So, it might not necessarily make sense right now. Do I actually have a supermarket on my home system? Yeah, I do. So, it might be a good idea just sending him back here. But this system will not really benefit from extra growth, since it's already at cap. So, it might still make sense sending him here. This system can benefit from extra growth. And it will speed up the supermarket, since it will get a production boost. So, I'm going to send him here. I'm kind of waiting to get one more hero who's either corporate or administrator. To get him to one of my other systems. Because you get you have a, a academy cap of three at the start of the game. That means I can only have three heroes. And I will get an extra hero for hire later in the game. So this is kind of what I'm waiting for. This dude would be completely useless on my actual systems. He would only be good with a fleet. And I don't even have a second fleet right now. There we go. Looks much better now. And I bet it will be done much faster. Yeah. Four turns instead of nine. Alright, let's see. Yeah, I should definitely grab this planet now. And in fact, I should grab this one as well. This one is pretty damn good. Let's grab them both. This system will actually be pretty good in the long run. Alright, this will be an interesting fight. This is pretty much evenly matched fight. He's a little bit stronger. Yeah, this is his standard design, so he has kinetic weapons and flak armor. Flak defenses, I mean. He has zero deflect, which is kind of interesting. So I'll still use sabotage on the first phase. And then... I'm going to use engineering on second one. And offense on last one. He has... I'm using mostly kinetic weapons on this. And he has no kinetic defenses. So let's do it like this. If he doesn't counter me on any of these, I should be able to win. We'll see how it goes. Or at least it should it should be a draw. A draw happens when no uh, side loses everything. So come on, give me a nice counter now. Fights like this is where countering actually matters a lot and decides the fight. Yeah, I countered him. So I should be able to win this now, honestly. Unless he counters the remaining two. So now he has minus 35% accuracy. Yeah, I'm going to win this easily from the looks of it. Might be able to get out of this with full health? Probably not. I want to not lose my scout because I need to send him down to green territory. Now that I actually uh, can. Come on. I might try to get open borders with blue. Yeah, I lost my scout. And he countered me now. Wow, I might actually lose this. I lost this. Yeah. Without that last counter, I would have won. But it happens. 
he's at red health now, so I can destroy him easily. I just need one more ship here. I need to hurry up. It will take him 17 turns. So I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. That was this fight. What's this? Oh, that was my previous fight. Research is done. But I have the next research queued up already. Hmm, can I lower my tax? I'll be losing 11 gold per turn if I do that. Not really worth it, although... It does give me quite a bit of extra research. Yeah, that gives me over 100 extra research per turn, so... I think it's worth losing gold for now. I'll get more once I finish these two. This should bump these two systems from content to happy, at least. And in five turns, Korana will be mine, unless a disaster happens. That's first two ships done, right here. So I'm going to... Do I want to send them both here yet? His strength is 483. And mine is 284 on both ships. I could probably defeat him easily now, but I can wait. I need to break the blockade, obviously, but I don't want to lose my ships pointlessly. I'm going to get rid of this dude first, and in fact, one of my ships is enough to do that. So this guy can go here. I could hire an extra hero for my fleet right now, but I'm not going to do that. And I can grab this planet, although... nah. I thought this would give some extra morale, but it doesn't. Yeah, I'm not getting any of these just yet. I need infinite supermarkets first. I'm getting that preemptively because I can get this first, which will probably get me 100% now on this system, and then I can grab one of these planets with supermarkets already done. Yeah, small lava, I'm not getting that either, definitely not. Extra research. And that covers everything. Yeah, I definitely don't want to lose 94 research per turn. I guess I'll leave with minus 17 gold for two more turns. I'm going to break the blockade here in a moment. Okay, I'm not doing this one on manual since this is pretty much one-sided fight. Very one-sided fight. He barely has any health left on this ship. There we go, he's down. Minus 14, a bit better now. Another fight? I can do this on manual. This is still the same design, I think, so I'll just stick to sabotage twice. Actually, sabotage once. Oh, hold on. I think quite a few of my ships are down to yellow. I might be wrong. Or I can use engineering three times in a row. So unless he counters me three times in a row, I should be fine. I think at least one of my ships was down to yellow? No. But two of them are not at full health. And I kind of want to keep my fleet at full health if I have to do a more evenly matched fight. So unless he counters me three times in a row, I should be okay. I countered him, so sucks to be him. Yeah, this will be a rather one-sided fight. I'm looking forward to getting a stronger ship design. Beam weapons are really, really good for most fights, since they are medium-ranged weapons. So they don't suck as badly as missiles do on short range, for example. And beam defenses are some of the later ones you get in the research tree. As in, you need more research to get equal level of beam defenses compared to kinetic defenses and missile defenses. And same with beam weapons. You need to research more to get equal level of beam weapons compared to the other two types.
Yeah, I did lose some health, unfortunately. And I need four more turns to actually take this system. There's no way he will be able to defend that. Hmm, okay, what to do now? I think I'm going to grab Fearless Foe, actually, because... The one thing I could lose to is meeting the primary fleet of my enemies with a hero on them. And Fearless Foe gives a nice bonus against fleets with heroes. So it's nice having that. Oh nice, my administrator got an extra level, so... I'm going to grab the extra gold, since I quite need that. I'm still losing 14 per turn, but that should be fixed very soon. Back you go. I should get two more ships in... 5 turns, yeah that's a bit too much. And two turns here. So once I get this destroyer, I'm just going to send all of these right here. And yeah, I finished building the improvement that increases my defenses and his invasion time went up to 19. I wasn't sure if it's applied in the middle of the invasion or not, but quite obviously it is. So let's check here. Yeah, I'm going to grab heavy isotopes first and first I need to exploit this system. This is Erit planet which gets extra bonus for gold. So this is a good order. Let's check this one. Yeah, I should colonize this Tanja planet. That's only minus 5 morale. Let's do it. And that looks like that's it on this turn. I'm in a pretty good shape now. I will take Korana very very soon. Let's see the current scores. Yeah, the green AI, the Ameba, is catching me up. I'm at 505 and he's at 480. So I might have to keep an eye on that. He could be dangerous in the long run. And let's see if I'm able to get open borders with blue. Open borders? No, he won't take it. I would have to pay him more. I could bribe him with some strategic resources. I could give him one titanium. I will still have four or more. For the monopoly effect? No, he doesn't want it. Okay, I guess I'll pass then. I could give him antimatter? No. I guess he doesn't want to open borders with me. Oh well. Maybe I should just get rid of this ship. I'm going to scrap it. There we go. And yeah, I'm about to go bankrupt, so I need to raise my tax rate, unfortunately. So I might as well raise it to 40. Although that will cost me 40 research per turn. Nah. I'll stay like this. I'm about to get another supermarket in one turn anyway. So that's not too bad. Okay, let's continue. He's still looking pretty good for me. I just need to watch my happiness. Come on. Oh yeah, I need to pick my research, right. So... I could just go for the next morale improvement. That's probably a good idea. So let's grab this and then this. That will give me the next morale improvement and there's yet another one down here. But I'm not going straight for that. I'm going to grab adaptive colonies after that because this gives me the first ability to remove some of the negative anomalies from my systems. There are two types of negative anomalies, which are basically bad and worse. So if I want to remove some of the extreme anomalies like acid rain, high gravity and so on, which give significant penalties, I need this technology down here. And these remove simple anomalies. And I also get the ability to explore the moon. And exploring the moon sometimes gives you a nice extra boost on that specific system, an extra bonus on that system. As you'll see when I actually get to that point. 
not every planet on the system has a moon though so you can only explore the moon if the planet actually has one and quite often you end up with nothing just wasted production time but the bonuses you can get are really really nice so it's definitely worth grabbing that wow he still has quite a few ships i just need to split my fleet a bit more i'm going to continue building ships here that seems to make sense i'll just keep doing that i can get a better design now so i'm going to design a new ship but first i'm just taking care of these planets Okay, looks good. And I have a fight here. No, not yet. Alright, so I'm not researching any military technologies in the near future. So I'm going to design a new ship with the new hull. I'll just call it Cruiser or whatever. Again, I'm not very creative at ship names. <laughs> but hey, if you want me to call a ship something specific, tell me in the comments below and I will. If the idea is actually uh, fitting to the space theme of the game. Alright, so... I'm actually going to grab engine on this one to give it extra mobility. It has 280 capacity. So using 40 of that for the engine system is not such a big deal. It's much smaller percentage compared to the smaller hulls. I wouldn't use engine on smaller hulls. I'm grabbing the intelligent tools for repairs. And then I'll just... I'm not going to get this, since I don't want to reduce uh, this ship's health by 20%. That would make me drop from 1200 to 960. This is not worth for the extra damage boost on the weapons, at least in my opinion it's not. And now I'm just doing the standard thing that I do on all of my ships, getting each type of defense, so I should be able to get free each. And I usually save about half of my capacity purely for weapons. So I got about half. I'm going to grab primarily beams on this ship and use the rest for missiles. Like so. This looks pretty good. And yeah, this ship looks pretty damn good now. Let's create it. There we go. I can actually start building it. Six turns, but is much stronger than my destroyer design. I can build it on my home system as well. Let's do that. Wow, that's much longer. I probably stick to smaller ones here. I think this is one of my higher production systems. This is my highest production system. That one was second. Oh yeah, this one is highest because my hero is there. So I could actually build a ship here once I finish this. I'll grab one here. That's six turns as well. Yes, I know he's invading me everywhere. I'll just build extra defenses here too to delay him. But first exploitation twice. This is ocean planet, so extra food here. The Arctic one benefits from research more. So I'll grab research here. And I'll actually grab some defenses on this planet. So this. Just to delay him. And Korana will be mine in two turns. There's nothing he can do to stop me now. Extra fleet is coming here, but that's only 320 strength. When I have 1.2k... Oh yeah, I'm going bankrupt. So now I need to raise my tax rate, unfortunately. I was just in fervent now, now I have to raise it again. Oh well. It's unfortunate that I can't get second administrator because with second administrator my economy would be very very different right now, especially when I get instant level 3 after hiring a new hero. I could just get a corporate hero as well for gold bonus, that would also work. This is a pretty easy fight, so I'm actually going to do this on auto. Just 3 times engineering. Are we there yet? There we go, I win. One more turn and this is mine. Let's have another fight. This looks a little more evenly matched. 
Okay, I'm actually going to do this one on manual. Let's start from engineering. Then sabotage and engineering again. I took quite a bit of damage from that previous fight, so that's why I start from engineering. Unless he counters me, this should be good for me. Yeah, if he counters me, this would be bad. Because then I wouldn't get any benefit from this card, obviously. Would be best if I countered him, but that probably won't happen. We'll see how it works out. I countered him, awesome. So that was very nice. I should be able to win this easily. Without losing anything. One of my ships was actually pretty low on health already. Come on, destroy them. Wow, I didn't destroy any of these, that's annoying. One goes down. Three are down. Did I win yet? There we go, I win. Without losing anything. But I did take quite a bit of damage. My hero is up to level 11 now, that's really good. And I got another level right now. Level 12 now. So, let's have a look again then. I could just get another ground pounder. But maybe I shouldn't get so many ground pounder levels. I could get one of these cards. I mean, my economy won't be completely broken for very long. <laughs> Minus 20 for all enemy defense mods is pretty good. Plus regeneration. Oh, this might be good. Plus regeneration for fleet in friendly area. I'm actually going to grab this instead of cards. That's, that sounds good. And this is pretty good as well. Extra regeneration for fleet and plus 2% regeneration in all areas. Yeah, this is in all areas and this is in friendly areas. So rapid adaptation is pretty good. One more turn and Korana will be mine. And what is green doing here? Right, I need to explore some of the green's territory. Let's have a chat with green. I don't think I can do anything useful with him. But maybe I can get some technologies from him. Optimize logistics. I could grab this from him, perhaps. I don't remember what this actually does. I just want to make sure I'm... Yeah, I'm actually researching this. Yeah, that's the technology I'm researching, so I'm not trading for that, definitely not. That would be a really bad idea. So there isn't really anything I can do with him right now. I would normally trade some resources for technologies, the AI quite likes doing that sometimes. And I can leave one to myself and trade everything else and still be fine. So I have five titanium right now, I could trade him four. I have two antimatter, I could trade him one in exchange for technologies. But obviously no point to trade it for technology, I'm about to finish researching anyway. Alright, let's go down here. No production down here. You know, I could just set one of these uh, to production to gold conversion and that would allow me to set lower tax. But I guess that can wait. I'm going to lower my tax again still, because that gives me a lot more research. I can just keep shuffling my tax rate every turn. Research is more important for me right now than how much gold I have. And there we go, Korana is actually mine now, so that's very nice. And unfortunately, right after you take the system, it's going to be on strike. As you can see right here, I have almost minus 70 morale penalty from ownership, which makes it have a red approval rating 2.9% right now. It will go up with time, so I just need to wait 
X number of turns, I can't tell you the exact number, and it will slowly start going up. What I could do is send my hero here with morale bonus and make it get out of strike status faster. That is quite a good way to do it. I could actually do it right now. I think it will be fine if I remove him from that system. But he will do more good on this system right now. Because I do still need to build these cruisers. And I can have one more fight down here. I guess this will be a fast one. So I'll just use Sabotage, but not this one. Sabotage twice and Engineering at the end, and I'm going to make this automatic. These are my better designs. Destroyer 2. And there we go, I win. He did keep one ship. Anyhow, this part has been long enough already, so I'm going to finish it here. My invasion was successful, so I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.